Hey everyone, Roxabox90 here with a video that I've been putting together for a long time, and I'm going to be making a bunch of these videos, which are my top 10 EDH cards, EDH commander cards in each color. And this is going to start off with the mono colors, obviously, and then go into two colors, three colors, and five colors. And these are my top 10 cards based on the criteria that they are really, really good in their own color, meaning within the monocolored realm but they're also useful in a lot of decks. They're not going to be extremely specific just for mono red cards. So we'll start off at number 10 with Stranglehold, which is four mana for an enchantment that prevents your opponents from searching their libraries. That is huge in so many decks because outside of card advantage, being able to tutor what you need in EDH is really important, unbelievably important. Forget the fact that combo decks basically crash and burn without being able to tutor in their decks. But all decks need to be able to access any cards they can get at any given moment because the situation in EDH changes a lot all the time. Preventing all your opponents from being able to search is a massively, massively powerful spell. Preventing the extra turn every turn really only hurts blue, but it's a nice bonus. The main reason it's such a powerful card is that it's easily splashable and it locks down so many players and so much advantage. Very, very powerful card. That's why it's number 10. Number 9, we have Urbras the Hidden. 5 or a 4-4 four, four body is always good. Legendary makes him a possible commander, which is really nice. Gives himself haste, but also gives everything else haste. And realize that this is a huge deal because besides for him, it's basically 5 for a 4-4 four, four haste, but also making sure that all your creatures all the time that he's in play have haste is really important because you end up having, for commanders, you end up having for big creatures, just having a haste generator is always awesome. And the fact that he locks down your opponent's creatures the first turn they hit play makes it really hard for your opponents to haste Voltron attack. It also prevents massive blowouts where someone plays a huge creature and swings in for wins. It, lo it slows your opponents down tremendously, but also it by giving haste and this on one body for a reasonable cost, Huge card, number nine. Number eight, we have Chandra of Blaze, and before I get killed here, the other Chandras are all good, and they all have honorable mention, but Chandra of Blaze is the most important for mono red, and is very useful in many two-color decks that splash red, because being able to discard a red card and deal four damage is already pretty decent. Obviously, it's annoying that you lose card advantage, but if you're feeding it into her to do four damage, it can remove commanders, it can finish off players, it has multiple playability options, and the most powerful effect in red is the fact that each player discards his or her hand and then draws three cards. Why is this so important? Because there are always tons of players out there who, need, who draw cards, because drawing cards and card advantage nearly always wins you the game. Red doesn't generally have so many of those, which makes it hard for a long-term game to play out because you run out of cards to play and your opponents gain their hands. By being able to remove their hands entirely at the, you know, you just minus two, boom, they lose their hands and they only draw three cards. Well, if you have no cards in hand and they have ten cards in hand, getting those three cards is three card draw for you and removes your opponent's setup. So that is a really powerful wheel effect on a Planeswalker is huge. Obviously, the minus seven doesn't really matter so much, but the first two abilities are quite good, and that would put her at number eight. Then we have number seven, Insurrection, which is eight mana to win the game, basically. I mean, you land this, you know, mid to late game, you steal all the creatures on the field, they all gain haste, which means you just take, you know, I'll take your Inkwell Leviathan, I'll take your Iona, I'll take, you take everybody's stuff and win, and that's really powerful effect. It also is a relatively useful win condition in red because often, besides for burnout, red doesn't have such fantastic win conditions in one card, and this card is one of those that is. Then we have number six, Sneak Attack, which is basically a cheat into play effect, but it's very splashable. It lets you mess around with all sorts of huge creatures, Blightsteel and Rockhole, Ulamog, Progenitus, all sorts of craziness, and it gives them haste. Yes, you have to sacrifice the creature, but it's such advantage, and it makes for such powerful plays. Even think about it, if you play an Eldrazi for one mana, yeah, it dies in a turn, you first, you get the haste, so you have the Annihilator, which is insane. <laughs> so this card is one of the most powerful red cards 
in all of Magic, and in EDH, it's crazy. Number five, we have Chaos Warp, which is three to remove any permanent. Red doesn't often have a lot of these specific removal, and red doesn't target a lot of cards such as enchantments that they have nearly no removal for. So having a card like Chaos Warp that is a very, very flexible, reasonably costed instant removal spell is a really big deal. Number four, Kiki Jiki. If anyone didn't see this coming, I'm very surprised. Kiki Jiki just hits play, goes crazy, combos off in so many ways, used as a commander. It just, it has such use. And in EDH, where you're running lots of huge creatures, not only you, your opponents are running lots of huge creatures that are not legendary. Being able to make a copy of them is ridiculous. So, I mean, it's just, there's so many applications with him that, yes, he costs three red, but guess what? Two, three color decks will still run him. Monocolor red, if you're not running him, you got a problem. Number three, reiterate. Compared to some of the cards in this list, this one may not have seemed like, whoa, this is huge deal, but guess what, guys? This is. Why? Because copying instance and sorcery spells is already a good card. Your opponents in EDH will always play awesome stuff. It's guaranteed. You know, they time warp, you reiterate their time warp. You reiterate their awesome search spell. You reiterate their massive damage spell. Whatever it is, reiterate allows you to buy itself back. And this is what puts it out ahead of things like Fork. Because there are plenty of copy spells in red. But none of them, except for reiterate, lets you get them back. And yes, it will cost six mana. But think about it. Six mana, copy a spell, get that spell back and get the reiterate back in your hand. It's kind of ridiculous, but realize you don't have to do that. It's still reasonably costed. But being able to buy back every single time you do reiterate gives you constant flow advantage. And if you buy back, your opponents will be nervous about playing those big spells because of it. So it is probably the best copy instant sorcery spell in it. Number two, Blood Moon. Why? Because of all the land destruction, it is the most flexible in red. It's only three mana. And it receives the least hate in across the game. Why? Because the lands are not destroyed, they're able to tap for mana. For players who can tap for mountains, that's fine, it's annoying, but fine. And for players that can't tap for mountains, then they have a lot of colorless. But that's a lot different than wiping out someone's land board. They at least have some opportunity to deal with it. And so it's much more flexible in a number of different uh, decks. It's more flexible in 1v1 versus and, and multiplayer. It's just an all-around really solid card. And manipulating lands, destroying lands, has one of Red's most powerful effects. And this card is probably the most universally awesome. And number one, Wheel of Fortune. This card is unreal. Not only in Mono Red, even though Mono Red EDH is probably the best wheel effect, there's a reason that if the wheel's not broken, don't fix it. Wheel of Fortune is ridiculous. It refills your hand in mono red and in red something decks. It also makes your opponents discard their hands and draw a random seven. So if your opponent's been setting up his awesome hand with Reliquary Tower, has his counter spells, has whatever he has, and then you just Bajiju Wheel of Fortune, wipes out the board that everyone has set up for themselves that red players often don't have, and makes it an equal playing field. Except it's not really equal because Red had no cards or few cards in hand and now has a full hand. It's a crazy card, super flexible, used in so many decks, and I've seen it single-handedly win games. So for me, that is the number one Red card in EDH Commander. So this is my top ten list. Obviously this is in my opinion, so if you guys have different opinions, please share them down in the comments section. Stay tuned for more of these top 10 lists. As always, Rocks Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.